Hey everybody, Homicide Center here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new legacy move that was just given to Tapu Fini, Nature's Madness. Nature's Madness proves to be a massive upgrade for Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini was in desperate need of a cheaper fairy charge move, and it gets that with Nature's Madness. It is 10 energy cheaper, and Nature's Madness lowers your opponent's defense every time it's thrown. Tapu Fini previously was a simulation warrior. Very good in theory if you could get perfect baits, but without perfect baits, it struggled even to beat things it had a type advantage over, like Polyrath, but with Nature's Madness, that is no longer going to be an issue. Hopping into the first match, we are doing some practice Ultra League battles, so I could use the Elite Charge Gem on a very high rank Ultra League Fini. And we pick up a pretty solid lead, Shadow Alolan Sand Slash into Jellicent. If you're running Tapu Fini in the Ultra League, you need to pair it with an extremely hard counter to Tentacruel, and that's why I have the Sand Slash on my team. I'm going to throw on Charge Attack Priority here because I do want to potentially force a shield for my opponent. They shield, and I'm more than happy just to let this go. I've gotten the shield advantage that I want. They're leading a water type, so they're unlikely to have the Tentacruel in the back. So now I can just send in the Tapu Fini, and I'm going to go for a one shield water gun farm down because Tapu Fini's energy can be quite useful. Opponent does not want to let that happen. They're going to send in Shadow for Alligator, and I'm firing off the Nature's Madness. That does some solid damage, but the important thing now is watch the for Alligator's health. Previously, Water Gun does two damage per turn, but after a Nature's Madness debuff, it does three per turn. So as we're going to see here, something very fun is about to happen. They shield up the Surf, they're going to try and make it to two more Hydro Cannons. They're at Hydro Cannon number one. I'm going to shield. They're going to try and get there. But thanks to Nature's Madness guaranteed debuff, I water gun down a water type and exit with energy. Opponent makes a sensational catch, sending in the Dragonite, switching in the Jellicent to catch the Nature's Madness. That's a beautiful catch by my opponent. But even with the catch, unfortunately, this is still just going to be game over. As I can send in the Gliscor, and even with the small energy advantage that my opponent has, Gliscor is going to be able to outpace and take the win. But I feel like that's a really good example of how Nature's Madness can take over games. The ability after landing a Nature's Madness to buff up the Water Gun damage, farm down and exit with energy, makes a dramatic improvement over what Moonblast could do previously. Terrible lead in the next match, leading a Lowland Sand Slash into Skeledurge. I throw one Shadow Claw and switch into the Gliscor because I actually end up deferring the Incinerate damage onto the Gliscor, so I have an energy head start on the Sand Slash, but I'm still at 100% full health. I build up to the Earthquake, bait with the Aerial Ace, and I'm able to get a shield. Opponent is going to bank energy on the Skeledurge, and in comes the Greedon to absorb this energy. I fire off the Earthquake, that does some very nice damage. Looking to farm up with the Gliscor, opponent is going to fire off the Body Slam just before I'm able to make my next charge attack. The Body Slam will pick up the KO, I'm going to send in the Sand Slash, I'm more than happy to absorb a Crunch or two, because in the Ultra League, Alolan Sand Slash can actually take that hit, but it looks like my opponent's actually running Trailblaze on the Greedent. So they are stuck throwing only resisted charge attacks here. They're going to go for Body Slam after Body Slam. I'm going to look to farm up to the back-to-back -back drill runs as I win charge attack priority because I do want to exit with energy to threaten the Skeledurge. Opponent, are they going to be sending back in the Skeledurge? They do, and I'm going to throw two Shadow Claws and the drill run. If they shield, I'm going to throw one Shadow Claw and switch. So again, I am transferring that incinerate damage onto the Tapu Fini. And now I have a tough call to make. I shield. I get baited. That's really not ideal. But now, you know what? I'm just double shielding. Because this is probably going to be the Shadow Ball. And there it is. Let's see what's in the back. It is a Golisopod. And this should be looking pretty good for me here. Again, another situation where I can go for the Nature's Madness, get that debuff, and suddenly I don't need to throw another Fairy move. I can over farm, pick up a knockout with the Surf, because even though it's resisted, their defense has been debuffed, and then I'm going to have energy to be able to get rid of the Skeledurge. Nature's Madness is just such an incredibly good setup move, and the synergy that it has with a one turn fast move is terrific. Because I can get this farm down, they can send back in the Skeledurge, Tapu Fini will very comfortably make it to the Surf. And something that Tabu Fini isn't really used to doing is kind of 1v2ing endgames, and it's doing that quite a bit so far. We've got a bit of a core breaker on the lead in the next match, leading Shadow Alolan Sand Slash versus Shadow for Alligator. I can survive one Hydra Cannon, so I am going to let this through. I will look to over farm quite a bit, and then fire off the Drill Run. 
Drill Run doesn't knock out, but it does some very nice damage. You can put it into farm down range. Opponent is going to commit the shield. Oh goodness, there's a little bit of a frame drop. Opponent tries for a snipe with the Zygarde, and I'm able to switch out, save my energy, and send in the Gliscor. Gliscor, at the very least, does force the Zygarde to go for Crunch, which is their worst charge move. Unfortunately, they do get the defense drop, which is less than ideal. No point in baiting a Zygarde. I go straight for the Earthquake. Zygarde is forced to fire off the Crunch. And now, what I think I'm going to do is honestly just send in the Tapu Fini and just go for a one shield full water gun farm down. Because Tapu Fini's energy, unless there's something like a Tentacruel in the back that completely walls me, is very, very valuable. So I am going to respect the potential Earthquake. Opponent ends up going for the Crunch, fishing for a debuff, and now we see why in the back there's a Shadow Dragonite. Now, Nature's Madness doesn't have the same base power of Moonblast, but look. It still is just going to one-hit KO the Shadow Dragonite. So it still packs quite a punch. Back in comes the Feraligator, and now my opponent's in an incredibly terrible spot. Do they shield the Nature's Madness and then have a minus one Drill Run land? Or do they no shield the Nature's Madness and then save the shield for the Drill Run, but they're already on one HP? The mind games that can be played endgame with Nature's Madness' ability to debuff are just incredible. And here, I'm going to be able to farm down the Feraligator and the Zygarde, and we take the win. We've got a terrible core breaker on the lead in the next match, leading Shadow Alolan Sandslash into Verazian. I try for the catch, but I am unsuccessful, and my opponent is going to be able to fire off the Leaf Blade into the Gliscor. In comes Feraligator. I'm going to go for the Aerial Ace just to try and get some damage before my opponent makes it to a move. Aerial Ace is not going to do a lot, and this is a battle of Shadow versus Shadow. I do decide to shield because I do want to try and get my opponent lower because if I can potentially put them into a water gun farm down range for Tapu Fini and get an energy advantage, that would be quite nice because I am extremely weak to this Verizian. My opponent is going to fire off their charge attack right as I'm able to make it to the Aerial Ace. I'm just going to let this through and then go for the farm with the Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is going to be resisting for Alligator's entire moveset. There's nothing for Alligator can learn that would allow it to hit the Tapu Fini. So I can just farm down and we'll have to see, do they send in that Verizian? In comes the Verizian. Due to the faster pacing, I'm able to outpace the Verizian and make the Nature's Madness. They let it through. That does massive damage. And now this could get a bit interesting. I'm going to commit the shield on the Leap Blade. I have to try for the catch here. I try for the catch, but my opponent anticipates the play and they send in Guzzlord. It's a simultaneous swap. I do still see a win con, however. This is going to be an extremely tough game, but I do still see a win con. This should be able to force the final shield from my opponent, which is quite nice. What I'm going to have to do is set myself up for an incredibly aggressive farm down. If I can undercharge this and water gun down with the Tapu Fini to leave with the Surf, I should win charge attack priority over Verizian and win the game. This is going to be really close. I think I did get the undercharge right, but the question is, is their switch clock up? The brutal swing lands, the switch clock is up, and the plan is foiled. Made it as close as I could with that bad of a core breaker lead, but unfortunately, we're unable to win the game. The tough leads continue in the next match as I lead this Shadow Alolan Sand Slash into another Shadow for Alligator. For Alligator is going to try and go for the charge attack priority tie. I'm just going to go for extra energy and just tank this Hydro Cannon. I will go for the Drill Run. Again, looking to deal some damage onto the Feraligator. But unfortunately for me, the Feraligator is going to shield and say no to me getting any serious damage. I think I'm just going to let this through. If I shield, they can just shield back and farm me down. And I'd rather just send in the Tapu Fini. Because again, Tapu Fini is a complete wall to Feraligator energy. The Tapu Fini Feraligator matchup is also one that is helped quite a bit by the fact that you have cheaper fairy damage as getting to a move three water guns faster doesn't seem like a lot but over the course of a game it can really really add up it's a tapu coco in the back that's not great i'm gonna switch out opponent sends in a dragonite as the final pokemon and this weirdly enough actually feels winnable i have an energy advantage and i have a shield advantage i think i can go for a one shield farm down energy from the glide score should be very very useful into this tapu coco and i just need to force their final shield i'm gonna bait with the aerial ace even if they call it it should hopefully put it closer to surf range the threat of an earthquake is able to force the shield which is massive my opponent will fire off their energy i could shield and go for the quake but you know what let's have a battle of tapus the Tapu Fini versus the Tapu Coco and Tapu Fini again with that cheaper fairy damage coming in clutch. Nature's Madness picks up the KO onto Tapu Coco and we take the win.
We've got an opposing Tapu Fini in the next match, and it's a shiny one as well. Definitely one of the better shinies in the game. Opponent goes for a safe switch into Greedent, and Greedent safe switch, even though I have a pretty good answer in Gliscor, if they correctly shield Earthquakes, things can get a bit uncomfortable, especially because I was very slow on the switch there, which is definitely not ideal. I'm going to be firing off the Earthquake. Earthquake does get shielded by my opponent, and that makes things quite uncomfortable. I still can tank one more Body Sam after this, and the nice thing, since I'm a flying type, is they're never going to be able to mud shot me down. Because Gliscor, I mean, Gliscor at this health range, there's just no chance they're ever mud shotting me down. But the threat of that body slam is always present. I'm going to commit the shield and go for the Earthquake. Earthquake, even if they no shield, it will not KO. And they are just going to let that through. I'm going to look to farm up some energy. Go for the Ice Punch. And they do get the catch. Oh, that is so unfortunate. I should have just gone for the Drill Run as it's not that much more expensive. But unfortunately, they do end up getting the catch. I can land the drill run now, but this is very uncomfortable. I will no shield a surf, not gonna be enough to knock me out. I will be able to make it to a last second ice punch. I decided to go for an undercharge here. I'd love to leave them at one HP, but unfortunately I don't undercharge enough. And now they can send in a shadow Charizard. Of course, this is amazing for me because I have the Tapu Fini, but it is going to be a little bit awkward considering that there is still the Greedon in the back and Greedon does have a move banked. I'm gonna let this through. They will go for the Blast Burn. I'm just gonna look to farm up. This is only a Dragon Claw. My opponent is just trying to put me into Body Slam range. I believe they have five Mud Shots stored, which means if they're three off the next, I should just be able to farm down. So I'm looking for the farm down. The game freezes. Luckily, they don't make it to a move and I'm going to be able to take the win. But that frame drop right there, I was, I was stressed about that frame drop, but luckily enough, we're able to take the win. Terrible lead in the next match, leading the Shadow Lolan Sand Slash into Annihilate. I save switch into the Shadow Gliscor, and my opponent will respond with Feraligator. Feraligator will fire off the Hydro Cannon. That nearly KOs, but the Gliscor is barely able to hang on. The Gliscor goes for the Earthquake and is able to force a shield from the opponent. But so far, this has been some absolutely terrible alignment. We're going to have to see if I can fight back here because this is not looking good whatsoever. I go for the Drill Run. I lose Charge Attack Priority. From here, I'm fully expecting they're just going to be able to knock out the Sand Slash. And I'm just going to have to trust in Tapu Fini to try and sweep. So I will be able to land that. Opponent sends in the Annihilate, giving up switch advantage. And I'm going to send in the Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini protecting itself against the Shadow Ball. But there's the Ice Punch bait. That's really not ideal. Unfortunately for me, the Annihilate ended up lagging there. So I wasn't quite sure of the exact right timing in the back. Unfortunately, it's Magnezone. So it's just a hard counter game. And those will happen. Here, I'm actually going to go for the Nature's Madness because I want the debuff to be applied. The Nature's Madness does get shielded. They're now debuffed with their defense, and I have a tough call to make. I'm going to call the Mirror Shot bait. They have a Mirror Shot plus a Wild Charge, and unfortunately, I don't get the 50-50 call right as my opponent does end up full standing the Wild Charge. I can knock out the Magnezone, but the Feraligator in the back is still too healthy, and one Shadow Claw from the Feraligator means game over for me. We move to the final match, and Shadow Alolan Sandslash finds its target as it leads into a Tentacruel. Greed and Save Switch will swiftly be answered by the Shadow Gliscor. This time, I was not nearly as slow on the swap as I have been in other games, which is quite good. My opponent tries for a Crunch debuff. Luckily, they do not get it. I go for the Earthquake, and my opponent does get the Shield Call right. Maybe I need to start baiting Greedence, because Greedence are correctly shielding my Earthquakes a lot of the time. Greedon with a massive pacing advantage, but again, this health range, they're not going to be able to pick up a KO with a Body Slam. So now I'm just going to farm up, go for the Earthquake again on Charge Attack Priority, and they can survive this. I am going to be shielding up their move because I desperately need to keep Switch Advantage. If Tentacruel gets on my top of Fini, then this game is over. I am going to fire off the Aerial Ace, again, winning Charge Attack Priority, and my opponent has a choice to make. Are they going to try and commit to a farm down? No, they're just going to let it through. Tentacruel gets farmed. I can now send in Sand Slash in the back. It's Annihilate, and I can send in the Tapu Fini. And this is another matchup made dramatically better by the fact that I have Nature's Madness. I don't ever really have to worry about going for baits, because even if they shield the Nature's Madness, they get debuffed, and that makes the following Water Guns and Surfs do way more damage. So I can land the Nature's Madness, get a farm down, and make a Surf first, the Tentacruel. So I am going to fire off the Surf. Oh, I try to go for the Surf! 
I guess I clicked it too late there, and now suddenly this gets uncomfortable because I didn't click the surf in time. When I played it in the moment, I thought that it was the game's fault, but looking back on it, I actually think that's my fault. I was just trying to maximize the water gun damage before I clicked the move, and in doing so, I lost the move. And now this might actually end up being a loss. I do have a pacing advantage, but they have the energy lead. I have to double up to win, and I do see the poison jab go through, which means I do actually have this game won, because Shadow, Lol, and Sand Slash will win charge attack priority over Tentacruel. I mean, to be fair, Shadow doesn't affect charge attack priority, just Sand Slash is a species, just a higher attack, and we're able to take that win. All in all, I think this is a massive upgrade to Tapu Fini, and definitely worthy of an elite charge TM if you're looking to run Tapu Fini. One thing I will say, if you look at PV Poke and you try and sim it Moonblast versus Nature's Madness, it will oftentimes show that Moonblast looks better. That's because on PV Poke, being a simulation, they assume perfect baits. And when it comes to actual gameplay, no one's ever going to always land the nuke or always successfully get a bait call. That's just impractical. That's not something that even the best players will be able to do. Nature's Madness offers dramatically better consistency as a Pokemon neutrally and way better pacing as well. 50 energy instead of 60 can be a very big difference maker in an end of a game where even one water gun can make the difference. So I'm of the opinion that Nature's Madness is a tremendous upgrade. I don't think there will ever be a need for Moonblast on Tapu Fini ever again. And I do think that this might actually make people start using Tapu Fini in the Ultra League again, which previously it was basically extinct due to the fact that it could lose to stuff like Polyrath. But now with Nature's Madness, since it does have those debuffs and it has the faster pacing, it should hopefully, finally, actually be able to beat Shadow Polyrath. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.